There are six different ways to get citizenship by making an investment in another country, including some you've probably never heard of. Today, I'm going to walk you through all six options. Having second citizenship is so important, and a lot of Westerners are realizing this right now. It's the, really the last kind of insurance that most wealthy people in the Western world don't have. And if you don't have someone in the family tree, a parent, grandparent, or great-grandparent who is from another country that you can use to qualify for citizenship by descent, if you don't have a spouse from another country or plan to have a spouse from another country, if you don't want to move overseas or if you don't want to move to a country that would grant you citizenship, maybe you don't want to pay taxes, maybe you want to move to a country like the UAE or Singapore where citizenship is unlikely or dual citizenship isn't allowed, uh, if for whatever reason you can't get citizenship by any of the numerous ways possible and you just want to make an investment, here's some money, get me on the track to citizenship, I'm going to cover the six different ways you can do that because there are dozens of different programs including many you probably haven't heard of. If it's your first time here, my name is Andrew Henderson, I'm the founder of Nomad Capitalist, we're a boutique consultancy that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors who want to obtain dual citizenship for more freedom and more options, reduce their taxes overseas and protect their assets. I'm also the host of the biggest and best offshore conference called Nomad Capitalist Live. And so the first way that you can get citizenship by investment is probably the one that you've seen if you've been researching online, which is what we would call direct citizenship programs. This is where you've got a direct path to citizenship as long as you've got a clean criminal record, you haven't been sued by 18 different people, um, everything in your background is clean, you're going to basically make a straightforward financial contribution and have citizenship in a matter of months. This is the five Caribbean programs, what's called Citizenship by Investment. We have many episodes on those programs here on the channel um, from Antigua, St. Lucia, Dominica, Granada, St. Kitts and Nevis. You've also got programs that we don't really recommend as much like in Vanuatu in the South Pacific. You've got programs like Montenegro, North Macedonia and Europe. Um, you have Egypt and Jordan and Turkey. Um, so you've got you know, these kind of um, fast track programs where you make some kind of qualifying investment. In the Caribbean, generally the best way to go is a donation. If it's in Turkey, you're going to buy real estate or put money in government bonds or a bank account. Um, some of the other programs are more open, um, but not as interesting. So that's going to get you a passport at least for, for one person and generally for the whole family in a matter of months. Could be as little as you know, six, seven, eight months by the time you do all the paperwork, go through the due diligence, get the passport in your hand. So you can get that done very quickly. That's a direct investment. There's really no steps in the middle, okay? Make a donation or in the case of Turkey, for example, buy real estate, get the passport in a matter of months. You're done, you're now a dual citizen. The second way, and that's what a lot of people like because it's just, you get right to the point. You get the insurance policy, you get the extra visa free travel, you get the extra options, you get the ability to invest in more countries, you get all the benefits of being a dual citizen without having to waste a lot of time. In many cases, like in the Caribbean, you never even need to go there. And so you can do it all from the comfort of your home. The second kind of program is what we call semi-direct citizenship. And so the most well-known program in this category is Malta. Malta does not call their citizenship program citizenship by investment. It's called an Exceptional Investor Naturalization Program. It's called the MEIN. This program takes about 18 months. And you say, well, why would I wait three times as long? Well, because you're getting citizenship in Malta, which is part of the European Union. And once you have that, not only do you have a passport that's pretty much as good as any other passport you could have, whether it's the US, Canada, Australia, etc. Um, you could give up your US citizenship and you'd be pretty much be able to function you know, just as well in the world as with a Malta passport. But you also have the ability to live, work, study, travel uh, within all of the European Union and EEA countries. So if you want to move to Switzerland, you don't really need to ask permission. Um, you just go to Switzerland and you register and you go through the process, kind of sort of like moving from you know, California to Texas. Um, you want to move to, you know, to Portugal, you want to move to Latvia, you want to move to Ireland, you want to move to uh, Romania, you know, here you come, you're going to do it. And so that program basically starts as a residence permit and then you spend a little bit of time there, a couple of weeks, and then you kind of make your way through and after 18 months the whole process is over. Um, and so that's semi-direct in the sense of there's a few different steps you've got to go through. It is a similar process, just longer, but you know there, there, there are some more ho hoops to jump through. Bulgaria had a program uh, which was more of an investment focused program versus Malta's donation focused program. Bulgaria's program recently closed. 
the island nation of Dominica, which has a citizenship by investment program, had suggested the idea of having an entrepreneur residence program where basically you would spend some amount of limited time there over the course of two years and then work your way towards citizenship for a much lesser investment than their $100,000 plus donation. That's what we call a semi-direct uh, citizenship program where there's kind of an intermediate step but you're still getting a passport in hand in anywhere from one to two years. The next way to work your way towards citizenship by making an investment is what's called a golden visa. You may have seen these talked about in the media or if you've been doing any kind of research. Golden visas are generally offered in Europe and basically what it is, is it's a program that I would define as giving you optionality, i.e. you get a residence permit in a country where you don't need to live in the country, but you have the ability to live in the country, and you're basically getting that optionality in exchange for an investment. So Portugal's Golden Visa program is one of the more well-known. Now, Portugal has numerous different residence programs where if you say, listen, I don't wanna live in my country anymore, I wanna live in Portugal, you don't have to make the multi-six figure investment to do that. You need to show them income, you need to show them wealth, you need to show them that you're willing to live there and go through all the steps that someone that would live there would do. And then you can go there minus a big investment. But the golden visas there for, remember, we're saying we're trading our money and we're buying back time, we're buying optionality, citizenship by investment. A golden visa does not get you citizenship directly, which is why I always push back when the media says, oh, citizenship by investment in Portugal, citizenship by investment in the US. No, what a golden visa program does in Europe or what the EB-5 program does in the United States, et cetera, is it says, hey, you're gonna make an investment and that's gonna be your ticket in. We don't care if you have a job. We don't care if you are married to one of our citizens. Your reason for coming here is you just invested 500,000 euros in our economy. And so therefore we're gonna give you a residence permit. And generally what you'll have with the golden visa is, unlike the US program, unlike a number of residence programs, the golden visa will say, you don't have to stay here to keep your residence permit, right? I held a residence permit for a number of years in Montenegro. Montenegro changed their process. Montenegro is in Europe, but not in the European Union. They said, hey, listen, now we've got a citizenship by investment program. You know what, if you're not gonna be here 10 or 11 months a year, we don't really wanna renew your residence permit if you're here on real estate. If you've got a company that may be different, but, um, the idea there was we want people who are actually going to come and live here. And by the way, we can, you can reapply for the residence permit every year, no worries, but you know, it's a little bit frustrating. The golden visa, the idea is, hey, you come for one day a year, you come for seven days a year, you come for 14 days a year, that's good enough for us. Now, in the case of Portugal, you can use that, you can work towards citizenship without the requirements that a normal person would have to go through, where the normal person maybe needs to live there for six, seven, eight months a year plus. You can live there for you know, a fraction of a month every year. And there's some other things that you probably want to do to, to have a good case, but you can spend a, a, a substantially lesser amount of time than the average person living in Portugal and be working towards citizenship at the same timeline. So time passes by, you're somewhere else, you take some vacations to Portugal, you have a few things set up and you can qualify for citizenship. Other golden visa programs like Greece, like Latvia, like Italy, like Ireland, which has its IAP program, they're not as easy in terms of granting citizenship, but they are also easy in the sense of you don't need to be there. And so if you want to go to Ireland one day a year with their IIP residence permit, hey, that's all it takes to make sure you keep that residence permit. It's optionality. If you want to work towards citizenship, you can. Again, in some countries like Portugal, it's pretty straightforward. In a country like Ireland, you're going to really need to put in the time there, but at least you don't have the requirement to do so. And so you have the optionality to not be there for a while, then maybe you come later, then you start working towards citizenship. That's what a golden visa offers you. And you're doing that in exchange for, again, rather than getting a job and moving in, you're making an investment, whether it's in government bonds, in real estate, in some kind of investment fund, bank deposit, something like that, okay? The next option that can get you citizenship from an investment is a residence permit. Now, golden visas and residence permits sometimes overlap. Um, for example, the country of Andorra in Europe has a program that some would call a golden visa, but it requires you to be there for 90 days a year. You're making a 400,000 euro investment, which is in line with some of the other programs, but you actually need to be there for 90 days a year. I wouldn't really call that a golden visa on top of the fact that it takes 20 plus years to get citizenship in Andorra. So that's not, you know, if you wanna live in Andorra, you get that. I would call that a residence permit. But if you get outside of Europe, you'll see, you know, countries like um, Costa Rica or Mexico, for example, where 
your ticket to getting in could be buying a property or putting some money in the bank. You're making an investment. Now, many Latin American countries, you can also qualify for income. So if you've got a pension, if you've got a job, if you've got any kind of paycheck, um, you can get in without the investment. But if you just have cash sitting around and you want to invest, you can do that in many Latin American countries for as little as thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars You get a residence by making your investment. And so some of those countries are going to require that you be there. Some of them are going to require that you're there, you're there for you know, three months or six months. Some of you want, want you to be there the entire year. So the timelines vary, but a residence permit is going to be a little bit less flexible than a golden visa in some cases and just as flexible in others. Um, in Latin America, all those residence permits will lead to citizenship on some terms. You generally need to spend at least some amount of time there. But the idea is you can qualify for a residence permit that's not quite as flexible as a golden visa. Generally, golden visa, I think, is also a term that's applied mostly to European programs. But a residence permit can lead towards citizenship. For example, if you have a Mexican resident permit, it's five years to citizenship. You will need to spend some time there. You will need to learn Spanish. You will need to you know, know something about Mexico. But you can get that residence permit and work towards the citizenship of that country. And you don't always have to live there, at least at the beginning. Now, the fifth type of citizenship that you can obtain by making an investment. Now, remember, direct citizenship, six months. Semi-direct citizenship, one to two years. Okay, those are citizenships you're just getting right off the bat. You're going in with the intention of getting citizenship. Golden visa, residence permit, and the next time, next type, uh, active investor visa. These don't have to lead to citizenship. There may be certain things that you need to do to make sure you get the citizenship, but there is the potential that you're working towards citizenship after a certain number of years, right? You're not going to get Portuguese citizenship in one year. It's just not possible, right? Unless you have a parent or a grandparent or your Sephardic Jew, what have you. But active investor visas are where you're going to make an investment in a business. It could sometimes, in some cases, be your business. Um, and in some cases, those investments would need to be approved by an incubator or would need to meet certain criteria. You could also make investments in someone else's business. Now, some of the golden visa programs allow you or some of the residence permits allow you to invest in a business. And so again, there's some kind of overlap here. But an active investor visa is more for countries where maybe it's harder for you to get uh, a residence permit through investment. So for example, the UK shut down its investor visa program, which used to be called the tier one program. The UK has come out with a couple of different like entrepreneur and startup programs where if you're investing in startups uh, and those are high probability startups that have the kind of the seal of approval, you can uh, get a residence permit by doing that. But it's got to be active. A golden visa is very passive. You go to Portugal, you put 500,000 euros in some kind of investment fund. Hey, I'll come back in seven years. Let me know how my money's done. Give me that return of capital seven years from now. Whereas something like the UK, um, something like Singapore, for example, the Entrepass, um, you know, countries where you're investing in a business, you're getting an active investor visa, you're theoretically either supposed to be helping the business or helping to run your own business, but that gets you, you're making an investment, residence permit that can lead to citizenship in the future. Again, the UK, you're gonna have to live there. Singapore, you're gonna have to live there and you're gonna have to cross your fingers. Um, so these are generally higher level countries that you would do this. You know, you're no, no one's moving to Honduras with an active investor visa by starting a business. Just, just wouldn't make sense. Okay. So these are for higher level visas. Now the last option, which isn't much talked about, is what I call a fast track program. This is if you're a very high level business person and you're already making high level investments. Let's say you want to go and hire 50 people in a country. Uh, I know of a gentleman who hired about 125 IT workers. Now, look at all the countries around the world. Look at how many countries are competing to be some slice of Silicon Valley or some niche in a certain industry. They want to attract a certain type of company. If you bring 125 jobs, if you bring 50 jobs, sometimes if you bring 10 or 15 jobs, or maybe you bring some kind of very special skill, or maybe you have you know, a $100 million exit, or who knows what your discerning factor is. But if you can bring significant value to a country, it's possible that the politicians in that country would be interested in either granting you a residence permit or granting you even citizenship. And so in the same way that Olympic athletes or famous artists have historically been granted citizenship, i.e. A country in the Gulf, Qatar, for example, would grant someone from an African country citizenship so they can come and play in the Qatari Olympic team and they can win medals as Qatar because they're trying to enhance their image. There are other countries that say, listen, we already have enough great athletes, right? But if you start a business, 
hey, you know, maybe that would be interesting to us. And if you're paying, you know, a lot of uh, people a good salary, you know, that could be an interesting uh, proposition for us. Now, you know, it's a matter of, you know, who can help you with that. I mean, Austria is maybe the one program that people who have done research on have seen talked about where if you're making a very substantial donation, 3 million euros and up, and, and we're talking, by the way, plus legal fees, well, well, well into the six figures. Um, there are other programs that are like that. By the way, you can also invest, you know, I think from 6.8 to 8 to 10 million euros. Let's say you invest in a factory. You know, hey, you get the, uh, the governor of the region where there's a factory that's kind of having some problems. You know, hey, if you can save 80 jobs at that factory, that's interesting. They go and they say, hey, Mr. Prime Minister, this guy's saving 80 jobs at my, this factory in my region. We've got to do something for him to, to encourage him to bring his money, right? And so obviously you want to walk a fine line there that um, this is not a deal where it's, a ca it's not a cash and envelope deal. You know, you don't want to do any of those deals. Um, that's not the kind of investment we're talking about. But if you're doing something that is commendable in a country where that's substantial, right? Obviously you're not going to go to France, hire 10 people and get the attention of uh, the president. Um, but I'll tell you this, I mean, <laughs> you know, if you were to go and hire a thousand people and bring it a very, very substantial company, yeah, I think a lot of countries in the world would be interested in that. If you're going to bring in 25 people, there are some countries that would be interested in that. I mean, Turkey, by the way, their citizenship by investment program, uh, if you hire 50 people and you keep those people on board, I mean, you can get citizenship by investment. Portugal's golden visa, if you hire 10 people. Bulgaria has a similar program. So those are, those are kind of commoditized programs that's written in. But, you know, if, if you're going and opening some business in a part of a country that needs that, um, that could be a way that you could obtain citizenship by fast track. And so that's a lesser known conversation because it's not just a matter of here's the criteria. It's a matter of what is it that, you know, a certain politician would say, oh, my goodness, this is great. So those are six ways that you can get citizenship by making an investment. As you can see, some of them may put a citizenship in your hand in as little as a matter of months. Some might take a year or two. That's really fast by citizenship standards, right? When I ask people, how fast do you want a citizenship? Oh, we're not in a rush, you know, in a year. That's a rush by citizenship standards, right? Most people are moving to the United States and it's taken them five to 10 years to get their citizenship, right? I mean, Andorra, 20 years. Other countries, you know, 20, 30 years. Um, you know, even a normal naturalization process, five to seven years. So six months to a year to two years, that's fast. The other programs are going to lead to citizenship on whatever that country's normal timeline is. It could be three years, five years, seven years, 10 years. Um, these are all ways you can invest money and you can get easier, more flexible conditions to work your way towards second citizenship, open up your options, and hey, maybe you can offshore your business or get a new property in the meantime.